Howdy, everybody. Welcome to my couch. If you're anything like me as a banjo player, you very much like post-hardcore and math rock and all the various forms of progressive, and you kind of want to do that on banjo because it seems like a lot of fun. And trust me, it is a lot of fun. However, you found that there isn't much information out there about using effects pedals on your banjo. And that makes sense. It's very rare for an acoustic banjo to come with electric possibilities. And electric banjos just don't sound all that great. Well, this is what this video hopes to remedy. I hope to give you a basic understanding and overview of a bunch of different effects and how they sound using an acoustic banjo with a transducer. Specifically, I'm using the Fishman Rare Earth Transu Transducer, and I'm using an Ibanez B200 banjo. I'm running into a Fender Champion 20 amp, and I'm recording all of this using the microphone from my iPhone uh, rather than anything else. And we're gonna go over each and every one of these pedals very simply. A few of them deserve a deep dive, and so I might do those videos if you're interested. But right now we're gonna go over just basic, simple effects uh, and how they sound on banjo. Uh, we will be doing this playing the exact same song with every single effect, because I think that is the best way to tell the sound most truly. We'll be doing Cripple Creek, because we all should know it. It's like a rule or something that we start by learning Cripple Creek. Here it is unaffected and sloppy because I always play it sloppy. <laughs> Now the first pedal in my signal chain is a compressor pedal. And what compression does is it makes your loud noises and your quieter noises closer together. Uh, so, and that's basically it. Um, I am using a Big Joe Stompbox Company compressor. <laughs> it is not a fancy compressor by any means. It cost me less than $50. Uh, but it's a compressor that, or well, it's a Stompbox Company that my local mom and pop shop happened to carry a bunch of and gave me a good deal on. So that's what I'm using. I've got the tone set to about 75%, the compression set to about 25%, and the output set to about 25%. And I leave this pedal on constantly because of what it really does for me is act as an easy button for hammer-ons and pull-offs. <laughs> Next up in my signal chain is a phaser, and phaser is a little difficult for me to explain, but basically when there are two signals playing at the same time, you get kind of a bouncy effect between the two signals if they're in the exact same time, and this was common on old records, and so they recreated it in a pedal. Um, for the David Gilmore Pink Floyd tone, you set the phaser real slow and you have it just subtly behind everything that you've got going on. If you want to get an old country record tone, you can do the same thing. Uh, however, I've noticed that when I do that, it's so subtle and I play in a lot of spaces where there aren't a lot of people playing banjo. In fact, I'm usually the only one. And so nobody notices that it's going on and they don't recognize any difference in the tone. Um, I usually use it as kind of like a starter pedal and then layer some other things on top of it. But here is how I have it set to get this kind of cool, almost robot tone from it. <laughs> Next up in my signal chain is a chorus pedal, which I don't use all that often, to be completely honest with you, uh, because it's very similar to a phaser in the way that it affects a banjo because of the short sustain and everything. But what this does is it doubles up your signal uh, to give you more of them so you get a chorus effect so that you're, you know, like a choir being called a chorus type thing. Here's how it sounds. So I've got it set really subtly, um, 
low level, slowish rate, not a significant depth to it. Um, and how it really shines is when I use it underneath the reverb pedal here. Um, it, it creates some cool uh, big stuff. Next up in my signal chain is the Nux Horseman. Oh, and that was an MXR analog chorus, uh, chorus pedal. And it's a, it's a fine chorus, nothing wrong with it. Sounds pretty decent. Um, next up in my signal chain is the Nux Horseman Overdrive. Um, overdrive on banjo creates a very distinct and unique problem because they are prone to feeding back with the transducer and the overdrive. So if you set it too high, you very, very quickly run into feedback. Well, you want it set kind of high to break up the signal as an overdrive, but I can't get this one to successfully do that. So this one, I usually set my treble kind of high, my output somewhat low, and my gain somewhat low, and it acts as kind of a treble boost pedal, which is really interesting. And yes, I have this pedal board secured to a music stand with duct tape so that you can see all the pedals, but you can hear right now the transducer picking up my voice and doing a little bit of feedback. Hopefully it won't feedback too bad on this song. But yeah, so it, you know, I use it sparingly, but it, you could hear how it brought up the treble and it kind of started breaking it up and it gave it kind of an interesting yet weird tone. And I like that one, it's fun. I don't use it on a ton of stuff, but I do use it from time to time. Uh, this next one I haven't actually been able to figure out how to do anything really great with yet. Uh, this is the VSM Slow Hand and it is a swell pedal, um, which means it makes things swell and die off. It basically cuts off the initial attack of the, the tone, um, which on guitars and things like that makes them sound kind of like they're bowed. And I thought there might be a way to like make it work with banjo for that, but I haven't been able to figure that out yet. Um, Cause I just thought that would be neat, but because of the short sustain on a banjo that it doesn't do a whole lot, but what it does do is sort of soften the attack of the banjo. So if I want a really soft dampened part, that's what I use it for currently. Yeah, that's right. Green is on, it's got two settings. Red is bypass completely and I don't even know why that exists, but. But you can hear how it kind of softened everything going in. It makes each note a little smoother, a little softer. And if I use it under some of the other pedals, which all of these end up getting layered into this stuff, it, uh, it has some interesting effects and it kind of mellows it out and blends everything together. Um, and that's kind of neat. It's useful for that mellowing effect. Uh, next up we have, oh, and yeah, that's a VSN slow hand. Um, next up we have this Walrus Audio ARP87, which is a delay pedal. And this is a fantastic delay pedal with a whole bunch of settings that will be getting its own video since this is already at eight minutes. Um, right now, I have this set to a dotted eighth note in the lo-fi program with a pretty decent delay. Um, the lo-fi is supposed to create, you know, a standard lo-fi sound to it, where some of them are kind of higher, some of them are kind of lower, some of them are a little bit broken up and staticky. Uh, but again, the sustain on banjo kind of doesn't allow for it to do all of that, but it does create an amazing dotted eighth note delay and is super useful. So here it is with Cripple Creek. <laughs> And it has a tap tempo right here where you can change the speed you're going at. I probably should have set it to the actual tempo, tempo of Cripple Creek, but I don't feel like it. Uh, next up, we have the Strymon Blue Sky. This is a version one. They're now on the version two. 
uh, and this is a reverb pedal. Um, it has a bunch of great options and modes. Again, it preserves its own video. Um, a, one cool thing about it, and this is a thing that I always use, because of this favorite pedal here, I have this set up to be two completely separate and distinct pedals. One is a standard spring reverb, which sounds like this. And the other one is a shimmery reverb, um, which gives us that kind of shoegaze ambient noise. And you can hear it on the tail end there. Cripple Creek really isn't the best song to show off that kind of sound. Um, Cause it doesn't, it's so many fast, quick notes in succession. That's the kind of thing you want to do on something with a decent amount of space to get that kind of spacey effect. And it's really cool. Uh, this one I just got and haven't played with a whole lot. This is the Walrus Audio Descent. And I have it set up currently as a reverse reverb pedal. Um, and it has multiple options itself and will also be getting its own dedicated video. Uh, after this one, but when I turn it on, I've got these. this preset button gives me three separate presets, so this can act as four different pedals. Like I said, right now, I have it at just a, a simple reverse reverb. It doesn't do a whole ton because I haven't quite dialed it in, uh, and again, it doesn't, Cripple Creek doesn't have enough space to really let this pedal shine, but here's how Cripple Creek sounds running through the reverse delay. <laughs> Probably would be better if I played Cripple Creek correctly instead of getting confused. So hold on. And so you get this like kind of chunky reverse delay out of that. Again, there's not really enough room on Cripple Creek for it to take over. Plus you're having the acoustic sound of my banjo against the amp sound. Um, which is normally what I try and do. I try and run it so that you get a somewhat dry acoustic banjo signal, and then all of this creates kind of an after back effect. Um, but yeah, so that was a basic rundown of effects pedals on banjo. As you can see, they're pretty cool, and they allow you to do some neat stuff. I will post a video here in a minute of me playing with the vocals that I do and showing you the pedals that I have turned on for that particular song um, that will be off an album that I have coming out of Affected Banjo and Spoken Word that's kind of fun that you can find on Spotify under Coal Mine Canary. Uh, if you like this video, if this was useful to you, please like and subscribe because um, that will help it do stuff and then I'll know to make more of them and to continue doing this because I hope it has been useful and helped you reach some more ideas about things that you can do with your banjo. Uh, there are some people who say that you never need to affect the banjo, just like it. And to those people I say, but it's fun. It is a lot of fun to be playing with this and to use it and to get these crazy sounds from my banjo. I just adore it. And uh, yeah, thank you all very much for watching.